Hi, and welcome back to the Java Web App Tutorial Series. So far in the series, we've built a CRM system that lists contacts in a data grid and allows us to filter them through a filter box. In this tutorial, what we want to do is create a form, essentially a custom component uh, that we can then, over the next couple of videos, turn into an editor for these components. Again, I want to remind you that there is a text version of this tutorial on Vaadin.com and there's a link to that below in the show notes. So be sure to check that out and you'll find all the code in an easy copy pasteable format there as you're following along. All right, let's get started. So I'm in main view and I have the server up and running. And now we're going to learn one of the kind of key concepts of building applications in Vaadin or essentially any component-based UI framework, creating your own custom components. So we're going to create a new component by creating a new Java class, and we're going to call this the contact form. And like main view, we want to extend an existing Vaadin component for this, but instead of extending a vertical layout, we're going to extend a form layout like that. Create a constructor here. Now that we have the form in place, we need to add a couple of inputs or, that we can use to actually edit the contacts. And again, you can find all of this code in the text version if you want to copy paste it. What we have here are two text fields, first of all, first name, last name. We have an email field for email, and then we have two combo boxes, one for status and one for company. Combo boxes are essentially selects that have built-in filtering, so you can type in and narrow down the, the values in them. Finally, we have three buttons, one for saving, one for deleting, and one for closing. Here in the form, like in main view, I'm going to start by giving this a class name. So I'm going to call add class name, contact form, and then I'm going to add all the components that we have here. So I'm going to call add on the form layout that we're inside. And then just going to start passing these in first name, last name, email, status, company. For the buttons, I want them all to be next to each other. So instead of just passing them in here, I'm going to create a little helper method. So I'm going to call this create buttons layout like this. And again, I'm using IntelliJ to create this for me. And from here, we're going to return a horizontal layout that contains the save, delete, and close buttons. In addition to just creating the horizontal layout, I want to configure a couple of things. So first of all, I want the buttons to be visually distinct from each other. So let's use some of the theme variants that Vaadin ships with to make it a little bit more visually apparent what the function of each one of them is. So we'll start with the save button, and we're going to add a theme variant to this. And the variant that we're going to add to the first button is the primary. So this denotes the primary action. It'll be kind of visually apparent there. Then for the delete button, we're going to add a theme variant again. And in this case, we're going to add the error. So that's going to make it look a little dangerous, uh, highlight it. And for the close, uh, for the close button, we're going to add a theme variant tertiary. So it's going to make it a little bit less uh, prominent than the other ones. Finally, I'm going to make this a little bit more user friendly by defining some keyboard shortcuts. For the save button, we're going to add a click shortcut of enter. And for the close, I'm going to add a click shortcut of escape. So that way, if you have the form open, you can press escape to close it or enter to save it. Okay, so now we have a form component. The next part is to actually use it in our main view to make it visible. So I'm going to create a new contact form here in the constructor and save it to a field. I'm going to call this form. Then I'm going to create a div essentially just a plain HTML div to wrap the grid and the form. That way we can build a responsive layout that adapts on our mobile devices. So we'll create a new div and we'll pass in the grid. 
and the form, like so. Extract this to a variable, we'll call this content. We'll give content a class name, so we'll add class name content, and then we'll make it full size, like so. And then instead of passing in the grid that we already have in the div here, we're going to pass in content like this. Okay, go ahead and build. And of course, if you're not running the application yet, go ahead and start the server. And what you should see right now is if you carefully scroll here on the side, you'll see that we have the form here at the bottom. So it did show up, we have we have all the fields, we have the buttons, but it doesn't look exactly the way we wanted it to look. So let's add the last element here, which is a little bit of CSS to handle this uh, layout and to turn it into a responsive layout. In the root of our application, we have a folder called frontend and inside of it we have a styles folder. Inside of it we have this shared styles CSS file that came with the, with the starter. So delete everything from it and then we're going to replace it with Simone. What I'm doing here is I'm taking that content div and turning it into a CSS flexbox. I'm giving the grid twice as much space as the form, meaning that the grid gets two thirds and the form gets one third. I'm using some of the built-in uh variables, the spacing variable in this case, to give it a consistent padding with everything else in the application. And then finally, a media query for narrow screens that hides the grid and the toolbar when we're editing, so we have enough space to actually see the form. All right, uh, so when we add the CSS file, we actually need to restart the server for that to get picked up. And with that up and running, let's refresh. And that didn't work because I forgot to do one thing. So we need to go into main view and actually import the CSS file. Very common mistake for me. I create something and then I forgot to load it. The path here is relative to the front end. So we'll do styles and shared styles.css like this. Build and let's see if this gets picked up. Okay, so there we have it. We have the form visible here next to the grid. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at using data binding to actually select a contact from here and binding all the values to the form and using that information to, to actually save the changes to a job object. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications to get notified whenever we have cool new content coming out. And I hope to see you in the next video to learn more. Thanks for watching.